Hey everyone, this is Dee Marley with the History Bards podcast and with the Historical Fiction Company Book Reviews. Thank you for joining me today. So I've been a little under the weather and I got behind on posting, so thank you for your patience and thank you for joining me today. Today's book review is on Margaret of Austria by Rosa Gaston. In a curious blend of nonfiction narrative poised in a way to feel like fiction, Rosa Gaston brings to life the tremendous life of Margaret of Austria. For many who know very little about this powerful woman in history, this book does an excellent job of laying out her life in an episodic way, and the reader gets brief glimpses into her marriages and her rise as a preeminent royal in a very turbulent time. Her ancestry and connections are astounding. From being aunt to Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, maneuvering marriage contracts such as the one between Henry VIII's sister Mary Tudor, initially to Charles, and taking in a young Anne Boleyn into her court years before Henry gazed upon the bold girl. Also, another famous connection is that her mother-in-law is Isabella of Castile, the mother of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife and Margaret herself even attracts the interest in marriage suits of the likes of Henry's father, Henry VII, and Charles Brandon, the trusted companion of Henry VIII. This story, indeed, is quite educational and sometimes, as stated, reads more like a nonfiction instructional account of her life. Yet Ms. Gaston veers off into fictionalized telling at select moments, such as intimate conversations between her and her husband, Philibert, or with her close companion, the dwarf, Newtigan. It is these slices of dialogue when the reader gets a glimpse into Margaret as a person, and when the character starts to develop, yet with the onset again of more kind of nonfiction ambiance, the reader never truly gets to know Margaret as a fully developed character in a fictionalized way. That being said, to understand Margaret's role in the politics of the times and to realize how incredibly astute she was in managing her provinces as governor of the Habsburg Netherlands, as well as negotiating the Treaty of Cambrai with Louis of Savoy, a treaty hashed out between two powerful women to put an end to the involvement of France in the War of the League of Cognac with Francis I, Louise's son and King of France, renouncing him to Artois and Flanders. The treaty also enabled the release of the Dauphin and Prince Henry, the future Henry II, to France in exchange for a hefty ransom, which was also negotiated between the two women. Lastly, the treaty arranged a marriage between Charles V's sister Eleanor and Francis I. One thing the reader does learn in this book is the immense amount of connection of the royal houses of Spain, England, France, Italy, Germany, and etc., with Margaret seeming to have her finger on the pulse of the different courts and political influences she needed to make to keep peace between the nations, she appears in this book as to be a most formidable woman in a time when women were seen as mere chattel and pawns to formulate alliances and produce heirs for kings and princes. For that alone, Miss Gaston gives the reader a moment of pause to admire such a lady. However, for anyone wishing for true historical fiction story of Margaret's life, you might take the author's telling with a grain of salt, as it is not strictly in that format. There is definitely more telling than showing, more narration of her life than any delving into her soul, which some of the brief slices mentioned above beg for. And as a reviewer, the mind vacillated between an encyclopedic rendering and a deep desire to want to know more about Margaret as a person. The connection between protagonist and reader never fully entwined. That is not to say that this is not a worthy book to read. It definitely is. But the reader needs to be forewarned as to the true intent of the book, which is, as it appears to this reviewer, to simply educate the reader about Margaret's life, which Miss Gaston does admirably. Margaret of Austria by Rosa Gaston receives four stars from the Historical Fiction Company. Thanks for listening to today and stay tuned for more book reviews coming up this week.